So, by the end of this lecture, we'll end up at QR decomposition. By now, you may know two matrix decompositions. The LU decomposition, which represents Gaussian elimination. The eigenvalue decomposition, which represents eigenvalues, and maybe the eigenvalue procedure. And you will now be uh, met by the QR decomposition, which is the matrix representation of the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process. And in the course of this presentation, you will also be introduced to orthogonal matrices, which is a very important category of matrices. And also something that's important to note, doesn't arise until you're dealing with an inner product. So that's something to keep in mind as our target. But our task at hand is to orthogonalize and then go a step further and orthonormalize, which, make, which means make them unit length. These three vectors. And the immediate question if somebody says orthogonalize is? That's right, with respect to what in a product. And begrudgingly, I will agree to this in a product, the standard in a product. It's the simplest. It's the most standard. That's what it's called. And again, I object only to when it's called the inner product. But I'm trying to illustrate something very specific here, and I think making it more complicated in this case would be a distraction. So I'm true to my, to my creed of using the right inner product for the problem. So I'm trying to illustrate a particular point for which this is the best inner product, so that's why I'm using it. So this is our inner product. According to that inner product, let me ask you a few quick questions. What is the length of this vector? Five. Remember to take the square root? Five. What's the length of this? Oh, I forget it. <laughs> What's the length of this one? Can you do it? Let's see. 196 plus four. Not bad. Square root of 200. 10 square root of two. Okay. They're not unit length, clearly. But not bad. At least there won't be too many square roots that are just ugly. Because here, right, the length is five, no square roots. I, I picked a Pythagorean triangle for that very purpose. Okay, are these two orthogonal? No, they're not. So let's begin making them orthogonal, and then we'll take the extra step of making them orthonormal, and then we'll look back on our process, which will hopefully fit on this board, and we'll capture it by our matrix product. And elementary matrices will play a very prominent role. So let's start doing it. I will actually, I'll write small if it's okay. Fortunately, it's, my camera is 1080p, so you can zoom in later. But I think you'll be able to see. I'll just say that A1 equals A. I'm even tempted to save some space, but that's what we do at first. We do nothing with A. Now, B1, is the gram schmidt orthogonalization procedure coming back to you a little bit? Yeah. For B1, the formula will be, I'll write it maybe once, maybe I'll write it one more time. Subtract from B its projection onto A1. Nine, not 19, nine. Did everybody follow this? Nine minus 12 minus three. Okay? And we know that we did it right. 
Because look at these two vectors. Now are they orthogonal? Yes, they are. So this step succeeded. Okay, this is going quite well, especially since we fixed the vector. Let's move on to the next vector. Do you want me to do it quietly? And you'll do it on your own? I will skip this intermediate step because it's going to be long. Okay? And just write down the numbers, but you, you remember the pattern. All right, let's do it. C1. Everybody's comfortable now and caught up? Okay. So we have just performed Gram-Schnitt orthogonalization. We started out with vectors that are not orthogonal to each other. And after three steps, the first of which was nothing, we've ended up now with three vectors that are orthogonal, as you can check. Actually, in a very neat way, because we have this Pythagorean triple. Right? So for instance, if you look at these two, you get 9 plus 16 minus 25. Isn't that nice how, how it all works out? And keep in mind that the length of this one is 5. The length of this one is, what did we say it was? Fifth, square root of 50. So 5 square root of 2. Well, and then this one is 5 square root of 2 as well. So now let's take this one step further and make them not only orthogonal, but orthonormal. So we have to make them unit length. How do you make them unit length? Divide them by the length. So we'll, go, we'll now go with A3, B3, and C3. Yeah. Oh yeah, A2, B2, C2. There's no reason to go to number three. Okay. B2 we need to divide by 5 squared of 2. Okay, and finally C2 will be 1 over 5 square root of 2, the same thing, because that's its length also. Okay, this completes the Gram-Schmidt, in this case, orthonormalization procedure. So it's just another example. We've, we've done one with polynomials. We went from our standard basis to Legendre polynomials for a certain inner product. Now we did just another example with the standard inner product in R3. So that completes this example.